guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Loki Kia in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? I have that one SUV that's been around for 30 years, if you could believe it. And this is the redesign. This is a 2024 Kia Sportage. This particular one is an X-Line and we have all wheel drive. But before we get into what is now a compact crossover SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. So you heard correctly, it's been 30 years since Kia came out with the Sportage. Now what's interesting, we didn't get the Sportage until 1995. It was available in Asian markets first in 1993, then in German markets, and then eventually it came to the United States. And it was one of two options. You had the Kia Sportage or the small sedan known as the Kia Sophia. Well, boy, oh boy, have things changed, not only in the auto industry in the past 30 years, but definitely for Kia as a brand. Going through their whole lineup, trying to bring that Kia Telluride magic and sprinkling it on all of their crossover SUVs. So what I wanna find out is, if you're looking for a compact crossover SUV, you got some pretty big heavy hitters to choose from. Mazda CX-5, Mazda CX-50, Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Tucson. I mean, that's just a few of them besides vehicles like the Chevy Equinox and of course the Ford Escape. So what I wanna find out, find out is I'm gonna pick one. Which one am I gonna pick? I'm gonna cover my eyes. I'm picking the Honda CRV. It received a redesign recently. So does this Sportage have a redesign. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our Kia Sportage X line and find out is it the better crossover compared to the CRV? Let's see if we can find out. Right off the bat, the style. You could clearly see that this vehicle is all new. The previous one, a lot of people were calling it like a poor man's Porsche Macan. Some people even thought it looked like the before the refresh of the Ford Escape. Clearly, you could see some styling from the Telluride and from the Sorento. Now at the front of the business, you'll notice this very angular daytime running lamp, very prominent, flows all the way into about halfway of the fender up there. Then you have three vertical LED turn signals, and then we have our double stuffed, double stacked LED headlights. Now, as we drop down, for some reason, they gave us these corner vent areas, but they didn't make them functional. So I am gonna zonk that. They look good, they just don't do anything. And why is it on the Telluride they're functional, Sorento they're functional, I even think on the Kia Soul they're functional. Why are they not functional here? So that is a zonk. As we come across the front, you can see that tiger nose grill design. I like this aluminum style, dark aluminum finish. Some gloss black, especially on the lower portion, but all functional. And then flat black on the lower side of things, still plenty of functionality. But definitely from the front, it looks like no other Sportage before it. Now, as you kind of Rise back up, low slung hood. I like the way Kia is shaping their hoods to fit with that tiger nose grill design. Let me know what you think about the tiger nose grill on this particular one. When we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? So what you're gonna find, of course, all new wheels. 19 inch wheel, gloss black, machine aluminum accents, 235 on the width, 55 series sidewall. And like I said, this one has all wheel drive. Now, because it's an X line, which is supposed to be more like a little off-road-esque. I'm okay with the flat black on the fender openings. Let me know what you think. One of my favorite parts about the fender, and I'm gonna see if Steven could show this off, is the nice crisp body line that they put right above where the flat black is. That thing looks really good, gives it a nice bold statement. Now coming down the side, they did a great job with the mirror caps, gloss black. You can see the intricate design, the LED lighting. And also the way there's a body line right in that belt line, it comes up on the front fender and then flows into the side doors. You do have your raised roof rails, gloss black and panoramic sunroof on this redesigned Kia K5. What am I saying K5? Kia Sportage. We just got done filming a K5, so stay tuned for that one. Gloss black up top, gloss black on the bottom. Let me know if that's too much gloss black in your books. I do like the color match door handles. And as we work towards the rear, I'm loving this area quarter glass window, and then look at this design. I think this is something different 
It's nice to see some different texture. Let me know if you're digging this area. I'm, I'm actually liking the way it almost gives it that floating roof design as it comes into the rear arrow of the lift gate. Now, as we spin around, just like up front, they did a fantastic job on the lighting. The one zonk is there's a bulb in there, and that's a big no-no on a model year 2024 vehicle. Steven's very happy about these tail lights because they don't go all the way across. You just have a thin bit of gloss black. Look at this. Thank you, Kia. See how nice it looks without the wiper? It's all hidden underneath and it just swings down. Nice long roof spoiler. Sportage name, X line badge. And then working our way all the way down, I could do without this texturized surface to make it sort of look like a grill, I guess. What do you think about it? Let me know in that comment section. But no exhaust finishes. I feel like an exhaust finisher would have gave it a little bit extra high-end touch. But let me know what you think about the lower rear bumper area, if, there, if it deserves a zonk. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering this Sportage. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod, but so does the CRV, so that's all fair and love and war underneath the hood. Simple engine cover. Let's talk about what's underneath the cover. So for 2024, you're looking at a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four. It produces 187 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque. It's made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. So unlike the CVT, this does not have a CVT, uh, C CVT, CRV, this does not have a CVT transmission. Zero to 60 in about 8.6 seconds. Top speed, 117 miles an hour. It's governed to 117 miles an hour. The vehicle weighs 3,728 pounds with the all-wheel drive. MPGs, 23 in the city, 28 on the highway, and you could tow up to 2,500 pounds with this new Kia Sportage. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire it up and see it roll in this parking lot. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Kia Sportage. This is the X-Line. If you own one of these, whenever you say the name to your vehicle, when you say X-Line, you have to do this with your arms. Just saying. Now, I know that you're thinking to yourself, Joe, ow, my head hurts. I've never thought this much in my whole life. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should get a CRV, a RAV4, a CX-5. I don't know what to do, Joe. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you. So if you're wondering, well, how much is this? Like that's gonna be the biggest decision to, is when it comes down to the money, here's the MSRP. So you can figure out whether you go CRV or the Sportage. MSRP, the way that this one's option is right around $35,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I like the clean style, soft touch material. You got this like grayish wood finish, which actually looks really really darn good and then on top of that the bright silver there is some gloss black around the switch gear which i am going to have to zonk and the armrest though is soft a little bit of stitch work door pocket it's a decent size i would say you could probably get two einstein bagels with a large smear of cream cheese and a bottle of starbucks coffee to wash it down now going from the door panel to the dash soft material don't worry, this is not on the dash. This is just from the windshield because it just got done pouring. Gloss black, nice design on the AC vent, some of that wood trim. Just make sure after you're done rubbing your wood, you don't get a splinter because that, that hurts. Now, when you get to the infotainment side of things, you have a nice large screen. We got a 12.3 inch screen. You'll notice how it all flows in together with the dash. Full touchscreen capability. It's got all the same apps that Kia has been bringing to the table. You can adjust all your climate control all through the screen, nice color graphics. Let me go ahead and throw it into reverse. Backup camera is super clear. Great trajectory, and you got your sensing technology while you're backing up. Flowing our way down, I do like this. This is all integrated into the actual readout. So you're just gonna hit 
to adjust your blower fan. You got dual climate control, which is nice. There's the, the temperature that you could set it to. Down below, what do we got? Wireless charging with some cooling fans, 12 volt USB-A and a USB-C. This guy right here is gonna control your eight-speed automatic, convenient start-stop button. I like the way that's placed. You do get heated seats, but no ventilated seats at this price point. And there are a lot of dead buttons, but if you go higher up the trim, these buttons come alive. Now, you do have a drive mode selector switch. Because we have all-wheel drive, you can lock the center diff. You got hill descent control. And then you got two cup holders, and watch this. They're magical. Abracadabra, Alakazam, make me a smaller cup holder. Boom, boom, look at that. So you can put your drinks in there. I could put, I would put some Jolly Ranchers back here. Watermelon, sour apple. Sour apple used to be my favorite. I would eat so many sour apple ones, it would eat up my mouth, the inside of my mouth. You do have re remote start. Same key fob as all the other new Kias. It's clean, it's modern. Nice high armrest. It's just, a, it's hard, it's on the hard side. It's like as hard as basically where the Pilgrims landed. So Pilgrim Rock is just as hard as this armrest. Lift it up, guess what? You could keep, I would say, 42 Smurf figurines in there. So if you used to collect Smurfs, Papa Smurf, Brainy Smurf, all the rest of them, you could keep those in there. If you collected them from the 1980s, they are worth big money now, more than Beanie Babies. So get rid of the Beanie Babies. The, the market fell out on those. The bottom fell out of the market. Smurfs is where it's at if you wanna make some money and retire. Seats, soft material. I love the way they did the stitching. Really, really gives it a nice high level feel. We have manual seat controls. Steven loves pointing those out. And then of course, plenty of room in here with the panoramic sunroof. Nice one touch operation. It goes all the way back, I promise you. But why don't you get your butt over here? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this new Sportage. All right guys. Here we are, business time. You don't have any memory seat settings, even though you do have power seats in this X-Line trim. I'm making the X with my arms. I feel good in here. The seats are great, lots of room. Steering wheel, leather all the way around. A Little bit of aluminum finish there. Flat black on the buttons. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you have that new digital display. Love the way that it's got all of the information, including the all-wheel drive system in the center there. And then of course, when you go into your different modes, it changes a little bit with the color. So if you're feeling a little bit of a sort of like Barney mood, you could go into Smurf, that, that <laughs> Smurf, you go into Smart, which could be Smurf mo mo mode if your Smurfs are purple. Snow mode, you could make a snowman. Sport is always red. And then normal, but who the hell wants to be normal? We're gonna leave it in Sport. No head up display in this particular trim, but let's get into the back seat and see what the Sportage is bringing for your passengers. All right, guys, here we are, backseat time, and really they did a phenomenal job increasing the bat back seat room. Lots of great space. You have the area where you could hang like a jacket or a coat, maybe a scarf, maybe your earmuffs on the back of the headrest here. I like the way they also give you this little hook to hang your wire because you have your USB, uh, actually USB-Cs, on the back of the seats. Nice large pocket. You could easily put a couple slices of pita bread back there, maybe some hummus. And then you have large AC vents in the center, a place where you could stand up your Twinkies. Five Twinkies will fit in that slot there. I have the seats actually tilted back, but you could tilt it any which way you want. So that's like normal, but who the hell wants to sit like that? We could go there or we could go like that. That actually goes back pretty far, a lot further than the CRV. So something just to point out. And then you have this nice armrest. It's a little softer than the armrest up there with two cup holders. And I'm glad that they gave us the same stitching in the back seat. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the cargo area and see if you should be buying this Sportage over the CRV. All right guys, cargo area time. You hit the button underneath the bottom lip there. Nice electric assist. Look at how low that cargo floor is. I love it. And of course, the rear seat will do a 60-40 split. You're looking with the seats up, 40 cubic feet of space. You fold down the seats, 74 cubic feet of space. Let me show you some of the nice touches. So you got a 12 volt, perfect for when you're at the beach. Maybe you're camping and you got a electric barbecue. You have a nice bright LED light. And then the best part of this is the handles to fold down the seats. You don't have to go over to the passenger doors, just pull and they flop down. 
very nicely. Look at that. One, two, three. And then just to prove that they go down nice and flat, they actually lock in, which is great. So you got almost totally flat storage. Like I said, 74 cubic feet of space. We do have a spare underneath. Plus, you could also slide this and get a little bit more room. Look at that. So you got a little bit more cargo room by being able to slide that floor. But you know what? I want to see how these wheels and tires slide down the road. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in our X line. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Kia Sportage X line with the all wheel drive. It just got done pouring. So I'll be able to go on throttle and show you how that all wheel drive system keeps us planted even when it's wet out like it is right now. Getting to that nice large 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and the infotainment system is well within reach. I love this light wood finish and the way that they blended everything super clean where the AC controls are really shows their attention to detail with this Sportage X line. The dash is very easy to read at a quick glance. And then, like I said, you could show the all wheel drive displacement in the center screen. Now this doesn't have those great blind spot corner cameras because we don't have 360 degree cameras, but you can get that on a higher option Sportage. But you'll see how nicely it sends power to all four wheels. That's a really, really nice touch. Steering wheel feels great. The materials in here are phenomenal. I guess I'm just a little over this uh, shifter. I wish they would do a rotary dial or something like that. Let me know what you think about the shifter um, with it being more like what you've seen in K5s and Stinger GTs and everything in between. The thing I like about the setup with this vehicle is just how nicely they've upgraded all the materials and it's so easy to get to all the controls. You got plenty of room in the back seat. The problem is, like I mentioned earlier, is that the four cylinder is very, very buzzy and very loud, which traditionally is what you find when you have a naturally aspirated four cylinder. I just wish they would have done something a little bit more maybe with sound deadening, but uh, the seats are comfortable, supportive. Like I said, I, I just, I would like to see something different than this particular shifter that they have. It, I think would really just kind of create a little bit different driving experience. Let me go ahead and make a quick U-turn here. Nobody's behind us. Hot throttle, here we go. Power gets down to the ground and we're off. Shifts are smooth, but a little sluggish from the eight speed automatic, just something to be aware of. But I think you're gonna be pleasantly impressed with what they bring at this price point in the new Kia Sportage, especially when you're comparing it to the Honda CRV. I mean, just the screens alone are worth their weight in gold with the way that people are really gravitating towards this particular setup. I like the dark interior and the light wood finish just brings up the level of class in here, which is, which is a nice thing to see at this particular price point. I guess the bottom line is, is beauty's in the eye of the beholder when it comes to the looks. Definitely has the more aggressive styling compared to the Honda CRV. So something to think about there. But uh, I'm hoping that this has been a good overall review of what the Sportage is bringing at this particular price point to go up against the midsize SUV competition. We're gonna get back to where it all started at Loki Key and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a Sportage second. All right guys, it's been another crazy day here at Loki Key. I definitely wanna thank Robert for getting us access to this 2024 Sportage X-Line. Let me know what you think. Are you going Sportage? Are you feeling sporty? Or are you going Honda CRV? Let me know down in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. Of course, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for Stephen Flood. Thank God he is here on planet Earth and instead of on another planet like Neptune or Saturn. Show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for sticking with us here on planet Earth and not going far, far away to another galaxy. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.